Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Lawrence Training Academy. I am here with my Hook 2 7X Triple Shot. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to use all the sonar features on this. Now before I start, I want to cover something. So the 7X Triple Shot is the only X model Hook 2 that has the same user interface as like the combo units that have the mapping. So for example, like the 7X split shot, the 5X split shot or triple shot, those have a completely different user interface. Um, and so I'll do a different video on those to cover that uh, portion of it. But I wanted to show you on this one how it's exactly the same. Um, I, Cause like I do a lot of videos on my 12, um, but I'm out on my kayak today and I can't really use the 12 inch on it. So uh, I decided to grab this 7X triple shot um, to use to show you guys with. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we're looking at our sonar screen right here. Um, you see your depth scale right here on the right-hand side. You see your overlays that have already been uh, pre-set up on it. Now you can go through and you can change those, which I've shown you on a different video on how to do. Um, but so what we're gonna do is, so the unit's gonna automatically default to be in uh, auto mode. So when we press our enter button right here, we're gonna see it's gonna come up and it's gonna say mode auto right there. Now what we want to do is we want to press enter on it, press the enter button right here, so that we can switch it over to custom mode. So we go down to custom, we press enter, and now you can see that we have all of these extra options that show up here on the screen. Now, the first one is going to be our range. Well, generally we want it to be on auto, so that way when the depth changes on us, so as we go into deeper water, shallower water, the screen will automatically adjust with us, um, you know, because I mean, you can manually do it yourself, but it's kind of a bit of a pain to have to constantly keep going in there and changing it. So usually it's best to leave it on auto, but I'm going to show you how to set it. So when you press enter there, you can see how you can go through and you have all these different ranges that you can pick between. And then if you arrow all the way down, you can get down to auto range. Now on my other video, I showed how it has like a little green corner or an orange corner. It means that it's selected. So like if I was to press enter, you see that it takes off that corner off of it there. Now I press enter again, it goes right back. Now for the sake of it, I'm gonna turn it off. Now you see whenever I arrow back up here, now it doesn't change automatically when I select it until I press enter. So right now I'm in about eight feet of water. So you see if I press enter on 20, you see how my scale changes there and it's showing from zero to 20 instead. But I'm losing a lot of screen area, so generally I don't wanna do that. Usually you wanna set it just slightly deeper than what you're actually at. So like say I'm an eight, so I set it to 10 foot. Now you can also go all the way down here so we have this option for custom. Now when I press enter on that, that lets me set the upper and lower limits on it. So the upper will be this number up here. So let's say I was only concerned with seeing from 10 to 20 feet. I could set this to 10 and I could set this to 20. So that way I only see from 10 here down to 20 there. Um, you know, some people might want to use it. Um, you know, a lot of people probably don't really use that feature, but I wanted to show you how to use it anyways. Uh, but so let's just go ahead and hit OK. Now let's go back in, bring up our menu. So that's really it for range. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it back into my auto. I turn my auto range on. Now as you can see that it always says auto up here at the top to let you know that the auto is selected. So I'm going to go back. Now the next one is going to be my frequency. Now again, this is going to default to high chirp. Now on these units, you only have the two uh, options, 200 and high chirp. Now they're basically based off of one another, or well, the high chirp's really based off of the 200. Uh, what the high chirp really is, is so it's broadcasting a whole range of frequencies. So it's actually sending 130 kilohertz all the way through 210 kilohertz. And so it cycles between all 80 frequencies between them to just kind of give you a, a better picture, to kind of pick up more stuff in the water. Usually it gives you better separation of targets from one another. So if there's like a cluster of fish or grouped up in one area, um, it'll kind of help separate them out. So usually I recommend running it on the chirp frequencies. Now you may get a little bit more on the water or a little bit more clutter, but it is picking up more. So you'll see more fish. So I'm gonna exit back out. Now you have your sensitivity. Now I can select it. Now it's gonna, it's gonna default to auto. Now as I go up, you can see how it increases or decreases the amount of stuff on the screen. Now, whenever I do it, you're gonna see how it just says like A plus one or A minus one, minus two. That means that it's auto plus one, plus two. Now what I can do is I can press my X button and then arrow down and I can select auto sensitivity here to turn it off. Now you can see what my sensitivity percentage actually is, which is 61%. So you can go in and arrow back up to it and press enter. 
and then I can go in and I can adjust that to whatever suits my needs. Now, usually I recommend just running on auto, but there are certain circumstances uh, where you may want to adjust that. These units are really automated uh, to the sense that they use specific algorithms uh, to use, uh, that they base it off of your sonar readings to be able to pre-adjust the settings for you. That's why they say it's the easiest fish finder uh, because in reality, the default settings on them are usually about what you're gonna want. But so, like I said, whenever you do these, I recommend just doing like one, set it to go up like 1% and then let it sit for a few seconds and let it kind of settle in and then do it again. Because if you do it too much, it's gonna, you know, just clutter up your screen and you may miss a percentage that's gonna work best for you. Um, but so I'm gonna hit my X, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna turn my auto sensitivity back on. Because at least that's the way I like using it. Now I go back, now I can go in. So we have advanced, which is gonna take me into the next level settings. Now we also have this restore mode default, which basically just puts everything back to the original defaults. And then I also have more options. Now first we're gonna do is advanced. So I select it. Now we have our ping speed. Now it's gonna to default to max. Now I usually recommend if you're fishing or at least drop shot fishing, lower it down to around 16 or 17. And what it'll do is it's gonna really help you lock onto your lure uh, or your jig that you're using, as well as suspended targets in the water a little bit better than if it's at max. Max is really good for when you're, you know, jetting across the lake or driving. Uh, but when you're sitting still, I recommend dropping it down a little bit. Just kind of a little trick of the trade. Now we go back. Now we have our scroll speed, which defaults to normal. I kind of like setting it at times two, so it kind of speeds up slightly on the screen. But the more you increase this, the more it's going to kind of stretch everything out on the screen. Like I said, I like times two because it makes my fish arches just a little bit bigger on the screen. Um, but you know, it's kind of more of a personal preference. Some people like it fast, some people like it slow. Um, so let's go ahead, let's go back. Now we have our noise rejection. Now our noise rejection is going to default to low, but you know, that's usually where you're going to want it because this is a filter and the higher you put it, the more it's going to filter out of our screen here. Now, usually you're going to increase your noise rejection if you have more than one unit broadcasting sonar at a time, or let's say there's a lot of people out on the water using sonar, um, or it's just picking up vibrations from your boat. Uh, that really helps kind of filter that out. Um, but usually, like I said, I like running it on low myself. So we're going to just set it to low. Now with the X out of this screen, what we do is we press our X button to go back. Now we also have our surface clarity, which the surface clarity really only affects the top portion of the screen. Usually it's about the top five feet. Um, usually low is going to be where you want it, but if you're getting too much clutter, uh, you can go in and you can set it to medium. And it kind of has, you can see, it filtered out a little bit more as I went to low, or even if I go to off, you can see how much more shows up on the screen here. Um, and so again, it's going to be kind of a personal thing. Uh, it depends on where you're at, you know, what body of water you're on. Uh, but I'm just going to set mine to low for now. Now we have our color line. Now this is again just a personal preference. What this does is this is going to adjust the colors that you're seeing on the screen. The lower you go, uh, the more blues you get. Um, and then the higher you go, the more yellow it's going to go with it. As you can see, as I go up, you get more yellows and reds. But the default is normally about where you're going to want it, which is 76%. Now let's go back here. And now the last section we're going to go through is our more options. Now when I select it, so we've got our split screen here where you know it's going to default to no split. But you uh, can go through and you can change it. Now what it's going to do is you can select zoom. What it's going to do is it's going to split the screen into two. So that way you can zoom in on one particular type of the screen or one side of the screen like that. If there's just one spot you want to be able to see while still being able to look at the, you know, the full screen that you're getting on there. Now, one other option is you can go down a bottom lock and what that's going to do is that's going to lock it into the bottom. Now, these units are a little finicky sometimes because as you can notice, it actually reverses our depth scale um, upside down on it but it still shows you the same type of picture where what we can do is when we zoom in on it, you can zoom in and then you can actually, so let's go back and now we can actually go up and down on it. But as you can see, it actually flips it over because the depth up there as I go up is actually getting deeper on it. So it's not as quite of a useful feature on the hook two units as it is on some of the other ones. 
Um, I believe that's actually something that they're going to fix on a new update for it. But let's go ahead and let's exit out. Let's go back in. And then the last one is our flasher mode. Now, this one you're going to probably recognize. This is just your general flasher uh, that you get on it. You know, it's kind of just the standard uh, round uh, old school. Now, a lot of people probably don't really use this unless you're ice fishing. Uh, but there are some guys out there, like I said, they're very old school and they prefer the look of this, like, like in the old Vexilars or the old fish locator uh, green box units. Um, but, you know, myself, I prefer just using a full screen myself. So I can go there, I can zoom back. Now the next one's gonna be amplitude scope. This one's kind of like a flasher, but it creates a vertical flasher on the side of the screen here. It's basically what it's doing. It's almost like uh, the old paper charts of when it initially starts to draw it on the screen. Again, I don't really care for this mode. I think it just kind of takes up room off your screen, but uh, you know, to each their own. And then one of the more important ones here is your palette. Now when you select it, this allows you to go through and change to whatever color you like. Now, me, myself, personally, I like number 13 because what it does is it turns the bottom brown. And so that way, any kind of fish or anything that are sitting right along the bottom, it really helps distinguish those fish because they're going to still show up as the different colors. Whereas when you're using just the regular default white, any kind of fish that are sitting on the bottom are going to blend in with it. So it makes them a lot more difficult to see, especially if you're doing like catfishing or something like that. It really comes in handy. Now, 14 does the same thing but it's just a blue background on it. That's more of just kind of a personal preference there. But so let's go ahead. I'm gonna leave it on number 13 for now. Let's go ahead and back out. Now the other one is gonna be your fish ID. Now this is gonna be kind of more for the beginner. Uh, what that does is when you select it to like symbols, all it does is anything that it picks up that it's thinking is a fish, it's gonna show like a little picture of a fish instead of an arch on there. Um, you know, like I said, that's more for the beginner because really anything that it picks up in the water it's going to think is a fish, you know, and so, um, you know, but some people like that, you know, until they get the hang of the unit. Uh, now, also, you can do the same thing with depth, where instead of it showing a little picture of a fish, it's going to give you a little number telling you how deep that object is. Or you can select both, where it does both. So it shows you a little picture of fish, and it shows like the, you know, uh, the little fish symbol and the depths on it. Or you can go down and you can select fish ID beeps. So what that does is it'll, anytime it sees, like it picks up one of the fish, it just makes a little kind of quiet beep at you to let you know that it picked up one. Um, but like I said, I prefer, you know, I'm a little more advanced uh, with using these, so I leave them off. But like I said, sometimes it's really good to use them to kind of get the hang of the unit. So let's go ahead and back here. Now the last one is going to be overlay down scan. Now again, this one, I don't really care for too much because you can see what happens. It fills up your whole screen with clutter on there because what it's doing is it's overlaying your down scan on top of your 2D sonar. So it really clutters up the screen really bad, which is the reason why I don't care for it. But when you select it, it gives you this other choice down here where it says down scan options, where I can then select it and it'll give me all of my down scan choices, just like if I was on my down scan screen. But the first one here is gonna be your overlay. That's gonna reduce down how much is actually gonna show up on your screen. So if you are using it, definitely recommend dropping this down quite a bit so that way it doesn't fill up your whole screen like that and you can still see your fish but you can also see the structure at the bottom you go back now you also have your palette which is like the other palette it just allows you to choose what color you want to uh, you know display it as now we have our contrast which is just going to be a lightness and darkness because uh, with structure scan you don't have a sensitivity level all you have is your contrast which is really just going to be as you go up it makes it more white and as I go down it makes it a lot darker. And then you have your frequency where you can just switch between 800 or 455. Uh, most of the time I usually just use the 455 myself unless I'm in just really crystal clear water. Um, you know, at that point in time, uh, I like running the 800 because it's just, it's a lot more sensitive and it picks up a lot more stuff in the water there. Now you also have your uh, noise rejection where instead of having like a low, medium or high, you can just turn it on or off. And then the same thing with your surface clarity. You can go through and you can increase that filter to help remove, uh, you know, the junk that you get up on the screen up here. But again, doing that one only applies to the structure overlaid, not the background multicolor screen that you get from your regular sonar. But that's basically about it on these hook twos. You know, there's really not a whole lot to them. They're really easy to use. Um, one last thing I want to show you is if we go into, if we set it back to auto, You'll notice that you'll get this more options button down here that'll just be there anytime it's on so you lose all of those other options on the screen 
but you still got the more options down here. Well, if you go and click on it, it just brings you into that same screen as before when we had the more options, where you have your amplitude scope, you can change the color and do all that without having to mess with all of the other additional features and menus that the unit has. And so, um, anyways, the unit, like I said, uh, it's real easy to use. Um, I recommend just playing with it, figure out what works best for you. Um, but I probably better go ahead and end it. It looks like it's getting dark out here and the weather is about to get real bad. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you all learned something. All right, be safe. All right, well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it below and hit the subscribe button and the little bell. This will allow you to get notifications every time I release a new training video for your favorite Lorance product. Also, I wanted to give you guys some really exciting news. We will have our very own website pretty soon. LorenceTrainingAcademy.com. It's going to have even more of your favorite in-depth, comprehensive training videos, so keep an eye out. Of course, I'll be sure to let you all know along the way when it will be up and running. And don't forget, when you watch videos from Lawrence Training Academy, the difference is night and day. Alright, I'll see you all next time.